Welcome back, crew. I've been transitioning my fantasy world uh, over into the Pathfinder 2e system, and I've gotten the itch to make a new player character. I uh, decided to do it with uh, the Path Builder system, which is amazing. So today we're going to go through and build a PC utilizing Path Builder, taking you through step by step, showing you how the Path Builder system works, how to get all the, the, the features you need on there, uh, and showing you how to build a PC that you could either export uh, to uh, Foundry if you're using Path Muncher uh, is the uh, the module you can add to export directly into your Foundry, um, or even just print it off and utilize it at the table. Uh, so we're going to dive into that. Uh, but first, check out our community post. I'll throw a link in there too. Um, I'm looking for more Pathfinder PCs to build. I've been having fun just trying like theory crafting stuff. So if there is a PC that you want to see built out, whether it just be like particular class archetype combination, or if like today you want to build it off of a particular character in fiction, um, throw it in there. Uh, and definitely for the archetypes and class ones, I'll probably try to run through as many of the suggestions as I can with different videos. Uh, for the ones that are based off real characters, I'll pick the ones I know, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, so check all those in there. We'll check them out. But today we're going to be doing M. Bison uh, from Street Fighter. So I've been wanting to play the new Street Fighter, but unfortunately I still got to beat Jedi Survivor and Diablo before I can pick up a new game. Uh, but I'm like, I thought he'd be a fun character to do a build based off of. So we're going to show you how to build M. Bison and all of his psycho power uh, included within. So stay tuned for that. One quick little caveat I'll say before we dive into Path Builder. Path Builder is amazing. It makes everything very simple to go through and build a PC with. One thing I will say for new players, though, I highly recommend going through and doing your first one or two character builds manually, not utilizing the Path Builder system, or kind of like checking your work maybe with the Path Builder system after you've done them. Uh, because I feel like it's so, at least I learned so much more kind of going through the book. Uh, and I don't, I hate my handwriting, so I always use a digital sheet still, uh, either like a Google Drive or um, just a digital PDF. But going through and figuring out all those pieces and typing them in, I feel like I learned more that way. Uh, even some of the players I've worked with who may have utilized uh, either Path Build or D&D Beyond or any of the other third-party builds for the different tabletop RPGs. It can be one of those things that you can just find that you can miss some of the subtleties of the mechanics. So really, if you can, go in and build it by hand the first time. But if you've done that and are familiar, use this. It saves so much time uh, to go through and build a PC. So yeah, let's dive right in. So we're going to go to the Path Builder site. Um, and I bought the, I think it's like five bucks uh, version, which allows you to do a couple extra features. Uh, but you can do, it's a free website. You don't have to buy it. There's a few features that you do need it for, and we'll kind of shout those out. Uh, so we're going to do a new build. Uh, nice thing, too, is I've got the Battle Zoo stuff. Uh, so I'm going to be utilizing their some of their dragon rules. Uh, but we're not using that for M. Bison. So we're just going to get quick started here. So it gives us a level one PC to start for this build for M. Bison. Uh, and let's kind of go over what we need for M. Bison before we dive too far in to kind of get the concept of him. Uh, so he's Street Fighter, so he's definitely very martially inclined. Uh, I looked up his fighting style. Uh, it's the rat. Basically, it's like a militarized version of Muay Thai. So a lot of strong kicks and punches, uh, which you can see if you've watched uh, or played any of his gameplay. Uh, he's got the psycho power. Uh, which is like this crazy psychic force that he can manifest based off of other people's, or even his own or other people's terror and rage. Uh, he can do it to do things like the spinning attack where he can leap from very far away and smash into people, throw these little psycho energy balls at people that are hurt. Uh, and there's other cool things he can do with that. So we're going to need some uh, kind of magical or psychic spiritual energy that he can call upon. Uh, and we need him. Very charismatic, but intimidatingly charismatic. Uh, he's definitely one of those people who's got a world-sized ego. Uh, we want to make sure that we can reflect them with mechanics and give them some features they can use to intimidate and stare down his foes and just show how superior he is. So those are kind of our build kind of mindset for it. Uh, with it being Street Fighter as the game class, I know a lot of you are guessing we are going to use Monk as the base. But we are going to pick an archetype, and we're going to use the psychic archetype on top of it. So with this build, we are going to use it, uh, build it using the free archetype rule. But I will call out for players or tables that may not utilize that, kind of what things I would sacrifice if we had to go through this and build it completely raw. 
I was debating about which way I wanted to do it, but just seeing on Reddit, Discord, it seems like everybody is using free archetype. I'm using it for my table. So like, I let's do it this way. That way we can get that full M. Bison feel uh, and make sure it kind of gets where we need it to. Uh, nice thing with this too. So we're going to build it up to level nine. I think that's a pretty accurate reflection of where M. Bison's at. You can have to probably, you could argue probably like up to level 13 maybe. Uh, but I thought nine would be a good one and kind of a good length for the video too. Uh, so yeah, let's go in there. We're going to pick level nine. And if anybody gets confused like I do, uh, what does it say to local folder? Uh, because of you, I initially decided to do at level eight, uh, but uh, there's a feature I wanted at nine. If you want to make sure that everything is adding in, make sure you go back to this section up here and update the level. Uh, because if you don't, it won't add in the features. Um, there's an expert thing that I was looking for, but why is this not applying? It's because I didn't change the level there. So a little tip of advice. Last piece too, uh, is if you do want to be able to uh, make sure that you're able to include like uh, free archetype and rules like that, uh, you're going to go into character, character options. Uh, and this is something that you have to have the paid version of the five, $5, not a subscription, just a flat $5 fee. Uh, and what you do is you go here and click free archetype and we're not removing any of the abilities. And that's really the only thing extra we're adding on to this. So M. Bison, he's human, so easy there. We can keep that in. Um, for him, I thought Warrior would work best. Warrior's going to give us a couple big things. It's going to allow us to pick Strength as one of our options. He's going to be M. Bison strong. Uh, if you've ever been hit by him, especially Street Fighter 2, he took like half your thing. It felt like each attack. Uh, it gives him the Warfare skill, which fits, uh, Warfare lore skill, which fits into his background. Uh, and one of the best pieces, we get Intimidating Glare, as well as Proficiency and Intimidation, because that definitely fits in Bison's MO. So we're going to click that there. Nice thing, too, is when we get to set abilities, it's going to add in all the cool stuff that we picked already, and we don't have to kind of go through and hunt down where all of our ability modifiers are coming from. We just have to go through and pick those choices we want. So as we said, we're going to pick Monk for this. We're going to go through and set our abilities. Uh, so we're going to keep uh, strength on that side uh, with dexterity as well. Oh, actually, no, we're clicking, we're changing that dexterity to charisma. Uh, we're changing the background boost uh, from constitution to strength. Uh, we're going to do another uh, dexterity on that side uh, and strength again for that one. Uh, so we'll get three strength boost, uh, which is going to put us up to 18. Uh, then we're going to get our four free boosts. Don't forget the four free boost if you're doing the ABCDs there. Uh, and we're going to give uh, strength, dexterity, charisma, because he needs to be very charismatic, uh, as well as constitution, because he can take a hit. And that's, I'll be honest, this is one of the areas where you probably are slacking a little bit more than we should be on constitution, just due to how many different things we have to prioritize a little bit here, uh, because he needs to be strong. He needs to have a good AC to avoid some of those blows coming at him. Uh, and charisma is like the other four P strength of charisma are just two big stats. So we had to sacrifice just a little bit on the con side uh, to make sure it fit in with what we're doing. So we've got our ability set. Now we just go through and pick our skills. Uh, remember we got lore and intimidation from his background. Uh, so we've already got intimidation picked. Uh, we're gonna get athletics. He's a street fighter. He's very athletic. He does a lot of grabs and throws too. So we're gonna bump athletics up a couple times throughout this character build. Uh, he's charming, he's deceptive, uh, and so we're going to fill out the other two with uh, those as well, because he is able to be fairly manipulative and get people to do what he needs them to do. Uh, and then finally, the last one, uh, we are going to spend our last uh, kind of little proficiency bonus there on acrobatics, uh, to keep him kind of moving quickly uh, and, uh, on the battlefield and being able to fall, because he does some flying moves too, uh, and be able to fall with grace. So we've got that. We're going to do Heritage. We're going to do Versatile Heritage. That's going to give us another free class feat. He needs them. Uh, he's got a lot of cool stuff we're going to be throwing with him. Uh, so let's get that one in there. Uh, sweet. So now that we've got that class feat, uh, he's pretty cocky. He's able to throw people off with his words. If you've ever watched uh, the Street Fighter II animated movie, or especially the old school '90s live action movie, uh, like he could he he could throw words out like attacks. Uh, so we're giving him Bon Mot, uh, which allows him to use diplomacy to be able to shake people with a a witty quip. Uh, so we've got that piece in there. Uh, we're gonna pick our ancestry feat. 
Uh, we're going to pick natural ambition, which is going to let us pick another class feat. Uh, and with that, we're going to pick key strike. Uh, so key strike, uh, we're going to be able to use this uh, because don't forget, we're going to use our psychic class on top of this. But with the key strike, we can definitely flavor that as some of his psycho power uh, and just really let him unleash on people. So we've got that. Uh, we got our true class feat. Uh, and we're going to pick Dragon Stance for this one. So I kind of debated on this. I, I mentioned earlier that I looked up uh, what his fighting style is based off of, uh, the Lidrat, but the, the militarized, militarized Muay Thai fighting style. Uh, Muay Thai is known for kind of like strong strikes, uh, especially with the, the leg strikes, a lot of knees, a lot of quick le uh, leg attacks. So I thought the Dragon Stance would be a good one with a D10 uh, based off lashing leg attacks uh, kind of around the Dragon's tail. So there we go. We got Dragon Stance. Now, this is a cool one. So, as I mentioned, we're using the Psychic Archetype for our PC. Uh, so, with this, since we picked a key spell, we get to pick what his key type is. Is it going to be a cult or divine? The nice thing is Psychic uses a cult. So, we will be able to utilize our monk level of proficiency with psych, uh, with uh, a cult spell, which are all Psychic spells, to cast our Psychic spells. Which is why we actually went up to level 9 versus 8, because level 9 gives you expertise uh, in your monk spells and uh, key abilities, which will give us expertise in our psychic stuff too, which puts us in a better spell, a uh, better slot for our spells. So we're going to click accept there. Ah, and we got level 1 done. Uh, and especially for those who are uh, kind of new to building a PC, it's just the path builder thing really kind of saves you so much time and so much writing and clicking. Uh, so definitely a shout out to Path Builder team there. Uh, no. Level two. Uh, we're going to go with Brawling Focus. Uh, so now, as I mentioned, I was going to call out on levels which things I would sacrifice if we weren't doing free archetype. I would sacrifice uh, the Brawling Archetype to get in our Psychic Clarification. So that's one thing I would let go there. Uh, but otherwise, um, with if you are doing free archetype, which I know a lot of tables are, get those. Because Brawling Focus, uh, it's going to give you the, the crit abilities with uh, kind of the brawling style. And that definitely fits in Bison being able to stun or slow people down with his hits because he's targeting your vitals. Uh, definitely cool piece there. So with Skill Feet, um, we are going to pick uh, up for that Assurance. And then we're going to pick Intimidation with that because uh, we he's very... Uh, he's, almost never fails to be intimidating. This is going to allow you to have that without having to fear the role uh, for situations where it may not be needed. Uh, so let's pick that now, just so we don't forget. Uh, with that, we're going to pick our Conscious Mind. Uh, so M. Bison, he's got the psychic power. He's able to move things with it as well. Uh, so I decided to pick the uh, Distant Grasp, uh, which gives you either Mage Hand or Telekinetic Projectile. Uh, with this, we're going to pick Mage Hand because he is able to kind of lift and move things using that psychic power. Uh, again, one of his moves is lifting somebody up and uh, hitting them with a psychic blast. Uh, so we'll get a little bit of that flavor there with this. Uh, and Mage Hand Amp. Uh, with that too, we get to pick our psychic casting ability. This is Charisma is our second core stat for him. Uh, and Bison should be a little bit more intelligent than we made him, uh, but Charisma will be good because that's our second core stat. Uh, it's going to help us out as we do some more stat boosts, and especially if we're focusing on intimidation and other cool things in Bison can do. So, and as you see, we've got level two done already. Uh, if you guys have watched my first character build, and then I know we're going a little bit more through the mechanics on that one, it's just crazy how much faster it is utilizing this because you have to type things in. Uh, you can just kind of go through and click what you need. Like for this one, uh, with our level three skill increase, we're going to make our intimidation up to expert level. And with that, that's our, uh, we get a general feat for this one as well. Uh, and with that, we are going to be utilizing the uh, Intimidating Prowess, uh, which allows you to get a bonus to your Intimidation role if you're kind of using your strength to help intimidate the opponent. So we get a plus one there, and, and Bison can definitely find some cool ways to either use his strength or his psycho powers to intimidate with that as well. Sweet. Uh, now we're back to another level where we get the archetype and class feat. So for this one, um, I'm picking Flying Kick. Because uh, if you've got that, he's got the Psycho Crusher attack, which has him fly across the screen. The Flying Kick will kind of imitate that a little bit on that side. Uh, so uh, choosing that in there. Uh, we're going to keep our archetype to our Psychic one, uh, but we're going to pick up basic Psychic Spellcasting. 
uh, which is going to allow us to pick some spells. We're going to pick all of our spells, though, at the end, just to keep it easy. Uh, and then also we're picking Titan Wrestler for one of his general feats. Uh, this one I wasn't as sure about, but he is able to throw, like, really big people, like uh, Yehanda and all that with his moves. And there, there still would be classified medium, I would guess. But I thought it kind of fits him a little bit, too, to have uh, just something they could let him throw and grapple and wrestle larger beasts and creatures that you may come across within the Pathfinder world or even a Street Fighter fight. Uh, sweet, now we're at level five. Uh, so we're going to pick our ancestry feat first. We're going to go backwards uh, and do our skills uh, as well as our ability scores. So with this one, uh, we're going to do haughty obstinacy. Uh, obstinacy. Well, hard to say. Uh, he's got a huge ego. Uh, his ego is definitely going to help him prevent being controlled by other people. Uh, so we'll throw that in. That's what I wanted to do a little bit earlier, but let's take it now. Uh, and with that, we get a skill increase. Uh, we can uh, bring. I uh, can't bring intimidation up to master yet, so we're going to be bringing athletics up to expert. Uh, and then we get our four ability score boost. Uh, so we're going to do strength. Get that up. Remember that we want you hit 18 uh, and a points and a skill, and they're going to be getting rid of that with a new one. Uh, but for now, once you hit 18, any boost after 18 only give you one point, and you can only do one boost per kind of round of this. So we're doing strength now, get that up to 19. Uh, we're going to get charisma up to 16, uh, dexterity up to 16 as well, uh, as, and uh, constitution up to 14. So with that now, we're going to go through and mess with our, uh, right, we've got level five done. We're going to go mess with some of our other stuff too. So we're at level six now. Uh, we're going to get Abundant Step uh, as our new key ability. Uh, one of the cool things in Bicing can do is teleport. Uh, this allows you to spend a focus point uh, and be able to teleport across the map uh, up to your speed, which our speed for in Bison right now um, should be about close to 40. Uh, so with that, we'll be able to teleport across the field so we can just give off a snarky one-liner uh, and hit somebody hard with uh, some psychic abilities. So we've got that in. Free archetype. Uh, with this, remember, you always have to go through it. Uh, and you can, if you wanted to pick a new dedication feat, if you are able to, you could do that. Uh, we don't meet those qualifications yet. And for this build, we want all of our psychic uh, kind of abilities we can stack on there. So we're going to do this basic thought form which is going to allow us to pick a level one or two psychic feet. So with that psychic feet, we're going to be picking the side burst. And what that allows you to do is use one action. Uh, you can do it once per round, and you can coalesce like a psychic energy uh, and throw it at somebody uh, when they for 1d4 damage. You have to make a basic reflex save. Uh, if you've watched him bice and he gathers his psychic energy sometimes and hurls it, uh, now we can do that with our build too. Uh, so with that too, so, and this is a kind of a hard level because I always want to call out where what I would drop if I was going to be doing this um, kind of rules as written without the free archetype. Uh, with this one, I probably would drop Abundant Step uh, to keep the, the Cybers. I think that's just a little bit more iconic than the Teleport, uh, but both are great. This was the hard, this is the hardest level I had to decide. So it's kind of a toss up. Got to go with what feels best if you were building your own M. Bison. Uh, and then skill feed on this side, uh, we are going to pick uh, assurance again, uh, but we're going to pick it for athletics. Because you know, if you played Street Fighter, if the way they do their throws, it's very, I mean, if you do it right, it's very rare that it fails. Uh, so with this, we wanted to make sure he got to get in, do those throws if he needs to, uh, grapple people up as he does that little psychic spinner thing. So uh, we made it a little easier to get that in. Sweet. And now we're done with level six. Uh, so level seven, uh, we're going to do a skill increase here. Uh, level seven is the first level you can do master uh, abilities. So we're going to bump up our intimidation to master. Uh, and with this, we get another general feat. Uh, general feat, hard to say. Uh, and with that, uh, he is a terrifying guy. Uh, so whenever he critically succeeds in demoralizing somebody, one of the actions you gain through the intimidation proficiency, uh, they have to flee for a round. So... Uh, just a little bit of extra oomph on that one. Uh, show it in Bice. It comes to their village, people flee. Uh, with this, so this one's what I debated about. We didn't give in Bison much wisdom, unfortunately, just due to how our stats stuck up. Uh, so we are going to give him will for this. Uh, and with this, uh, and I would actually clarify, this is one of the reasons, too, I recommend going through and building by hand. Uh, level 7 is a monk. You get to choose one of your ability or your uh, saving throws, and you get to bump it up to mastery. 
So we're bumping up our will uh, and bringing that up to mastery level. Uh, sweet. So we've gotten level seven done. Uh, now we're going to level eight, our second to last level. Uh, with this one, this is another one that's going to be a kind of a free archetype level. With this one, I'd recommend going with the free archetype feat from Psychic, or the archetype feat from Psychic. But I, for I, with this one, I'd pick Key Blast. So what that allows you to do is unleash a cone of force damage, which you kind of flavor uh, as a Psycho Blast attack that he does. Uh, and with that, you can kind of charge it up, get your Goku on a little bit too, uh, for using number of actions per round to do so. So with that, we'll get the free class feed there. Uh, but we're going to go into this one, and we're going to do Advanced Thought Form as our level 8 Psychic Feet. And what that allows us to do, uh, we can pick a feat that's half of our level uh, or less uh, rounded down, I believe, rounded up. Uh, and with that, we're going to be picking the Psy Strikes. This one's a sick one. And this is how we're going to get our signature Psycho Blast for uh, the, the punchy attacks for M. Bison. Because whenever you cast a uh, Psychic Spell, or when your recent, most recent action was to cast a Psychic Spell, or unleash your Psyche, uh, you're able to uh, add force damage and uh, turn your Psychic Ore to your attacks, adding 1d force damage to each attack with either that weapon or item strike that you choose. So with that, we'll be able to do 1d6 extra damage per an attack after we cast a spell, which is pretty sick. You can get some pretty good damage with that. And then for our last skill feat, um, I picked Lie to Me. Uh, there are probably other cool ones you could do. He seemed, uh, he's very charismatic. He seemed to be able to sniff out lies uh, in the animated series and in some of the game cut scenes that you have for him. So I thought that would fit for him. That's one though. Definitely throw in the comments if you think there's a better one there. That was probably one of the ones I was shaky about as well, but I eh, thought it worked. Finally, for level nine, we are going to pick uh, his last skill increase. And we're going to bring athletics up to mastery. So we've got two mastery skills, athletics and intimidation. We've got the other ones trained. And I think that's a pretty good reflection of M. Bison's skill sets. Uh, then we get to pick an ancestry feat as well. Uh, for him, I picked Clever Improviser. And we've kind of got it in. That's M. Bison's uh, level one through nine. Uh, there's a couple of things we still need to pick, uh, but let's go to spells first. So you'll see we've got all of our focus spells in there. We've got Key Strike, Abundant Step, Key Blast. We got our Mage Hand from our Psychic uh, Archetype. Now we have to go through and select our Psychic Spells. So one of the things, uh, we, three things we need to be able to do with M. Bison, we already got Teleport done. We've gotten his Psychic Blast from range, as well as making his Attack Psychic. The other big things we need to be able to do is make him be able to fly or kind of float, because he does that quite frequently. Uh, he also sometimes has moves where it makes it feel like there's multiple of him around. Uh, as well as, um, well, the last one I thought was just kind of a good pick for him as a good build wise. So let's do that for the the first one that's just kind of more of a good build pick for him because with M Bison we have to kind of touch it as we get through, but you can do a lot of damage with M Bison uh, with the uh, in the Pathfinder Two E game the one we built with him. So we're gonna give him True Strike. Cool thing with True Strike, one action to cast, and it's gonna help us unleash our um, Psychic Strikes. Uh, so it's one action. We can use Psychic Strikes. We can Flurry of Blows. Uh, and just lay on some pain. Uh, we're also going to get for our level two spells, because uh, and one thing I should kind of clarify too with building them, since we picked that basic spell casting, uh, each two levels, I believe it is, we gain more spells. So at level six, we gain level two spells. At level eight, for sure, level, at level eight, for sure, we gain level three spells. Uh, so with this, we're going to pick Mirror Image to kind of reflect how sometimes he can make it appear like he's all over the place uh, as well for our level two spell. And then for level three, we need to, him to be able to fly, so we're going to pick Levitate. Uh, and that's the spells. So we've got our archetype spells. We've got our focus spells. You'll see, too, with our archetype, we're at expert level, thanks to Monk having that occult proficiency and gaining that level nine. Uh, and uh, only thing we'd have to do uh, is pick our strikes on here, and we're going to pick unarmed. So we're going to the unarmed section there, uh, and we're going to pick our special unarmed, 1d6, uh, due to being a monk. And then we're going to, last thing we're going to pick on that side is our dragon strike, and we can get into our dragon stance there. Ah, uh, if I could find dragon then. Uh, 
So I am missing the drag. Oh, because I'm not in unarmed strikes. That is why. So once we go to unarmed strikes, like we should be, there's dragon tail. Uh, we can click that in. Uh, and now we've got our two attacks. So I'm not going to go into equipment and all those other pieces. I wanted to build it in bison build that kind of stood on his own merits. Uh, a couple highlights about this build uh, is we can do some pretty sick damage. Uh, with our first round, we probably want to get into our stance. Uh, and we could either do some key blast at that time or uh, spend some points on key strikes. But the next round is really where we can really come online with this. Because uh, if you do true strike, you can unlock your psychic strike ability uh, and give yourself advantage on doing a hit against uh, your first blow. Uh, but the nice thing is you can mix that with flurry of blows as well and just rain on some damage to people. Uh, you could do uh, you can mix true strike too with your flying kick and do in bison psycho charge uh, across the field. Uh, there's so much cool stuff you could do with this one. Uh, the nice thing is we did all rules as written, and I think we've got a pretty accurate reflection of in bison. He can teleport, he can levitate, uh, he can move things with his mind, uh, he can enhance his strikes with his psycho power, uh, and it's just like everything that's kind of mechanically known for him, he's got options for. Him. It's pretty sick in my view. So yeah, this is our M. Bison build. Uh, I'm actually gonna throw a link down to this as well. Uh, so if you want uh, for the JSON or the files, so if you want to be able to export it into your game, go for it. I'd uh, be able to either if you're running it for the as a player and get your own M. Bison on, or if you wanted to have it as a villain for the crew and have M. Bison just beat up your players, have some fun with it. Yeah, so. Uh, Probably throw in the comments or check out that community post too. Throw in some other builds. I'm going to be doing some more of these. Most likely using Path uh, Builder just because it saves some time a little bit easier. We went through nine levels. Uh, I think the time it took us to do uh, a level one or three PC. I forgot which level I did it for. Uh, to throw that in there. But yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Like, subscribe. Uh, die, this is uh, June, and June's game of the month is the Die RPG by Kieran Gillen. Uh, come through and make sure to check out some of the videos we've got on that side and check out our live actual plays June 27th and 29th. But thanks for hanging out, everybody. Till next time.